This is Brazil. Wild, dramatic, friendly. Some of the most picturesque places that you could ever visit are located in Brazil. And some of these pictures, I think, really demonstrate that. Welcome to Brazil. It's the largest country in South America. If you notice, Brazil is located right here in South America. It's highlighted in yellow, and it's on the same part of the world as the United States. The United States is located right here in North America. Did you know that more than 200 million people live in Brazil? Looks like they're big fans of beaches, like we are. Thick rainforests cover much of Brazil. The biggest is the Amazon. It's the largest rainforest in the world. Thousands of different kinds of animals live in the Amazon. Animals like the lion tamarind, the toucan, and the poison dart frog. The Amazon houses what's called a lot of biodiversity. Biodiversity is uh, when there are many different kinds of species that live in one ecosystem. And so the Amazon rainforest is one of the most biodiverse places in the whole world. Another thing to keep in mind is the Amazon is so important to the world. Oftentimes, it is said that the Amazon is like the lungs of the world. Why do you think that is? Why are trees so special? Well, trees actually take in the air that we breathe, that we, uh, that we exhale, and they breathe it in. So we put out carbon dioxide. They breathe in the carbon dioxide and they breathe out oxygen. So trees are incredibly important and the rainforest of the Amazon, for this reason, are very important to the world because they allow us to have clean air to breathe. Brazil also has dry grasslands. These are called pampas. Farmers raise cattle on the flat land. Brazil is home to a huge swampy area. It is known as Pantanal. If you notice, does this remind you of anywhere? The swampy spaces? The land where we raise cattle? This is kind of similar to many parts of Mississippi and New Orleans and uh, Louisiana, having swamps and lots of farmland. Very, very similar. Brazil's soil is very rich. Farmers grow lots of plants in it. Brazilian coffee and sugarcane are two important crops. And look at all that greenery. All of that represents food that is grown there. Fruits such as guayavas and papayas are also grown in Brazil. Native people first settled in Brazil thousands of years ago. And these are sometimes what we refer to as indigenous peoples. Europeans arrived around 1500. These Europeans came from Portugal and Spain. It's one of the main reasons why the main language of, of Brazil is Portuguese. They brought people from Africa and made them work as slaves. And in 1822, Brazil became free from European rule. Now, I don't know how much you know about American history, but this is very similar to the history of the United States. At one point, there were indigenous peoples who occupied the land of the United States. It was then colonized by European explorers and settlers. 
and people were brought from different countries and forced to work as slaves. And for that reason, the United States is incredibly diverse. There are many different types of people who are American now today uh, because of the history that had happened. Uh, the same can be true for Brazil. The same can be said. Uh, very similar in terms of the native people, the colonization, and the freedom liberation movement, uh, and how diverse our countries are. Brazil has many large, busy cities. The capital is called Brasilia. Sao Paulo is the, the country's largest city. More than 11 million people live in Sao Paulo. Another large Brazilian city is Rio de Janeiro. It is one of the most famous cities in the world. It has steep mountains and white sandy beaches. How do our beaches look? Have you ever been to a pure white sandy beach or ever seen a mountain near the beach? Sugarloaf Mountain is a huge cone-shaped rock in Rio. Every year, a huge festival called Carnival takes place in Rio. People wear colorful costumes. They play music and dance. Giant floats fill the streets. Carnival is the biggest festival in Brazil. I'm noticing a lot of similarities between Southern Mississippi coastal culture and Brazil. It's amazing. What do we have in Mississippi that is very similar to Carnival or the festival that they have each year? Wasn't too long ago. That's right, Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras is very similar to, the, to what they celebrate. Now, what is celebrated and how it's celebrated is different, but the idea of having a massive celebration and festival is very similar. Samba is a lively Brazilian dance. It's performed to music with quick drum beats. The samba is danced alone or with a partner. The main language in Brazil is Portuguese. Are y'all ready? We're going to say a few things in Portuguese. This is how you say bye in Portuguese. Tchau. This is how you say thank you. Obrigado. I'm going to say that one again. Abrigado. There are around 180 languages spoken by native people in Brazil. That's a lot of different languages. 180 different languages spoken by indigenous peoples. How special is that? What are some tasty Brazilian foods? Well, grilled meats are popular. People also enjoy a fish stew called muqueca. For dessert, Brazilians eat chocolate sweets called brigadieros. Huh. This seems like some stuff that I would be down with trying because this is so similar to what we've done. And you know what? Even if it's different, it's still good to try. But this is not such a far departure from some of the foods that I think we sort of like and gravitate towards. Grilled meats, barbecue, for instance, or uh, gumbo. That's what the mukeka kind of remind me of. And then, I don't know about you, but everybody loves chocolate, right? So I would love to try a brigadero sometime. Brazilians love soccer. The country is home to some of the best players in the world. In Brazil, soccer is called football. Bloop,
the games that we like to play sometimes when we're just sitting around the dinner table is this. We come up with um, words that start with a certain beginning sound. So, Lincoln, tell me a word that starts with M. McAllister's. McAllister's. That sounds really yummy right about now. All right, it's your turn to ask. Everett, tell me a word that starts with O. Mm. Ostrich. Ostrich? What a good word. That is such a cool bird, isn't it? Yeah. Very cool. All right, it's your turn to ask. Oh, yeah, like, all right. So, go ahead, your turn to ask. Mom, tell me a word that starts with D. D. Um, Dad. Dad, who is filming this segment right now. <laughs> um, all right, so once you get really familiar with that, yeah, yeah. Once you get really familiar with that, you can all kind of name some words that start with that letter. You can make it even more challenging by saying lots of words together that start with that letter, and that is called alliteration. Can you say that word, Everett? Alliteration. Alliteration. It's a really fun word to say. What is alliteration, Lincoln? Alliteration is when words start with the same beginning sound. Yes, like um, Taco Tuesday, right? Or can you think of some alliteration? Hmm. Hmm. I know. What? Lollipops lick lions. Lollipops lick lions? That's like, that would be in a crazy world, right? Yeah. Like backwards world, not lions licking lollipops, but lollipops <laughs> licking lions. Yeah. Can you think of some alliteration, Everett? Hmm. Or can you think of one word and maybe we can help you make some alliteration? Or can I say I that? have no idea what alliteration is and I don't <laughs> have any alliteration in my head. No alliteration in your head? Okay. Well, there you have it then. So if this activity is too much for your younger kids, you just roll with the uh, initial beginning sounds. And for your older ones, they might like to play this. Now, something we can also do that my son came up with the other day is we each say one word that all starts with a sound and we make up some crazy alliteration. So let's start with Everett, the youngest, and see if you can help us. You ready? Give us a word that starts with P. Pop. Pop? Oh, I got one. Yeah? P for pop in the kitchen. Pop, okay, like popcorn or something in the kitchen. All right, so P for pop. So Lincoln, it's gonna be your turn and then my turn. We're gonna make up some alliteration with P. Pop. Pounced. Pounced on petunias. I don't know, that's a kind of flower. Pop pounced on petunias. Was that some good alliteration? Yeah. Eh. Everett says only so-so. She's pretty hard to please. All right, so we learned a lot about Brazil. Here are some fast facts. The capital city of Brazil is Brasilia. The population of Brazil is more than 200 million. The main language, Portuguese. The money or currency that is used in Brazil is called the Brazilian Real. The major religion is Roman Catholic which is a type of Christianity. Neighboring countries include Argentina, Bolivia, Colombia, French Guinea, Peru, and Venezuela. Did you know this? Here's a cool fact. Some Brazilian fishermen train dolphins to help them catch fish. I didn't know that. Did you? So here's some vocabulary terms that we explored throughout our reading. Capital. This is where a country's government is based. What's the capital city of Mississippi? If you said Jackson, you'd be correct. What's the capital of the United States? Do you know? Washington, D.C., that's it. Crops. Crops are plants that are grown and gathered often for food. Do you remember the two main crops for Brazil? Sugar cane, or sugar, and coffee. And those two go hand in hand, don't they? The last two that they mentioned, they were two fruits. You may have heard of them before, uh, but you may not have uh, before reading this book. Guayava and papaya. 
A festival is a large celebration. Do you remember what that large celebration is called? That's right, carnival. Native means belonging to a particular place. And so native people are a group of people who belong to a particular place, original people. Rainforests are large areas of land that are covered with trees and where lots of rain falls. So let's take a look at just a couple little activities that you might be able to do to celebrate Brazilian culture at home. Here's something you could try. Do you have any dried pasta at the house? Try painting or food coloring pasta, put it on a string and create your own carnival necklace. What about uh, those of you who are interested in maybe going out for a walk? You might want to take two toilet paper rolls and create some binoculars, decorate them, and walk around your neighborhood. Try to find some new plants and animals that you never have seen before. Do you like to put together arts and crafts? Well, this right here might be the, the trick. If you have a paper plate and some construction paper, you can create your own carnival mask. 